Hello and welcome to Number Talks. Today we are looking at the expression 44 times 3. And what we do in a number talk is you take a moment to try to solve this problem mentally without any paper or pencil. And then think about the strategy you use to solve this expression. And then in just a moment, what we'll do is we will look at all the different ways that you can use mental math to figure out what is 44 times 3. So go ahead and do that right now. Pause the video, figure out 44 times 3, and then unpause the video, and we'll look at all the different ways you can do it. All right, so one way that we can do it is we can use the distributive property. The distributive property lets us break apart this 44 times 3. What we're going to do is you see we're breaking it up into 22 plus 22. We're just cutting it in half, basically. So we're going to say 44 is really 22 plus 22. And then when we use the distributive property, what we do is we break that apart so that it multiplies by each of those. So what we get is 22 times 3. And then we add that to the other 22 times 3. So we're just breaking it apart into two chunks. And so that's 66. That's 66. So add those two together, and we'll get the answer you hopefully got, 132. Another way we could do it, also using the distributive property, but let's break apart that 3, because doubling is really easy. So let's take our 44 times 3, and we're going to say instead it's going to be 44 times, let's take that 3, make it 2 plus 1. And now we're going to distribute that 44, multiply it by the 2 and the 1. So it's 44 times 2. That's an easy double. And then 44 times 1. That's easy. That's just 44. So you see how that kind of helps us out. So we're going to get 88. We're going to get 44. And so that's 120 and then 12. So you still get your same answer of 132. So that's two different ways that we can use the distributive property. Many like to use this form of the distributive property. And what we want to do here is we want to break apart our 44, our larger addend, or our larger factor, but we want to do it by place value. So we're going to take our 44 and think it's really 40 plus 4. Just break it apart by place value. Then we'll take our 3 and distribute it and multiply it by both addends there. So we've got 40 times 3. So that's 120. Then we're going to add that to our 4 times 3. That's 12. And I bet most of you probably used this method to solve it. Add those two together, and guess what you're going to get? 132. Another method we could use is doubling and halving. Doubling and, ha and halving is pretty cool, because what it does is it lets you double one factor and then have the other factor, and you still get the same product. So take a look at what we did. We took our 44 and we cut it in half. You see this gray area right here? That means we're getting rid of this. So we're going to cut that in half. Now, in order to keep our expression balanced, we need to double our 3. So you notice how we doubled our 3. So now we've got a 6. So we took our 44, cut it in half. We took our 3, we doubled it. Still a balanced equation. So now we have 22 times 6. So that's still going to get us our 132, because that's really 120 and then an extra 12. Some of us might have used compensation. Compensation is nice because this 44 is not really easy, but what we can do is we can say, you know what, if I add this one, 45 multiplying by 5s is a lot easier than 4s, so what if I said that's 45 times 3? Okay, so 45 times 3, this whole thing right here is going to be 45 times 3, so 245s is 90, and 345s is going to be 135. But since I added that extra 3, now I've got to get rid of this 3, so I've got to get rid of one group of 3. And guess what we're going to get? Our 132. So that's how compensation works. You add a number that makes it easier to multiply, and then you take that group back away at the end to get you your same answer. We also could use the associative property. Now, the associative property is all about how we group our numbers. So we take our 44 times 3, and we're going to break down our 44, and we're going to say, you know what, that's really 11 times 4. 
Now this is different than a distributed property because that uses addition. In the associated property, we're going to use three different factors. And all we're going to do is we're just going to shift these parentheses. Instead of 11 groups of four, what we're going to do is we're going to shift the parentheses, same factors, and we're going to do four groups of three. So the associated property works when you have multiplication, three or more factors. You can use it with addition if you have three or more add-ins and just change the grouping here. So that's what you see here. I've got four groups of three. So there's each of my four columns there, one, two, three, four. And all the way down, so that's 12. And how many 12s do I have? I've got 11 12s. And I'm just going to draw that down there and say 11 12s. And most of us might know our multiplication facts. So that's really 11 times 12. And we might know that that's 132. That's a fact that we might memorize. Final way we can use it is the associative and the commutative property. So let's take this 44 times 3. Now, 3 is a prime number, so we can't break that down. So really, we're just going to break down that 44 a different way. Last time, we did 11 times 4. Now we're going to do, let's do this. Let's do two groups of 22. Let's say it looks like that. And so we've got two groups of 22, and I'm going to write it right here. We're going to shift those parentheses. So now I want two groups of 22 groups of three. Ooh, I do not want 22 groups of three. That's why I wrote commutative property. The commutative property is the order property, and it lets me switch the order. So I can just do like this. Two times, three times 22 is the same as 22 times three. So I've got two groups. So here's my two groups, my two rows. And I've got three columns of 22 each. That's really 66 and 66. And that's going to get me my 132. So those are just a few of the ways that you can find 44 times 3 using mental math. If you found another way, please go ahead and just add that as a comment to the video. Teachers, you can find this slide deck on my website, 5minutemath.net.